everyone. My name is Trish Ta. Thanks for joining me for this talk about remote rendering with web workers. Today, I will walk you through how we built Argo, an extensible framework that allows rendering of remote content inside of Shopify's apps. Here's what we'll be covering today. I'll talk about the core concepts, how we built Argo, the end-to-end -end flow, how we can swap out React, and I'll follow up by having a quick demo of all the pieces working together. Here are the core concepts behind remote rendering. First, we need to create a JavaScript sandbox. This sandbox allows us to securely execute code in a background thread. The communication to the main thread can be achieved by sending messages. This is implemented as a web worker on web. On iOS and Android, this is implemented as a headless JavaScript engine. Next, we need to implement a remote procedure call layer, RPC for short. This is a protocol that enables one program to call the service in another program. Finally, we make use of proxies. A proxy is a wrapper that intercept and redefine the target's core operations, such as invoking functions or accessing properties. I'll talk about how we built Argo. First of all, what we were trying to achieve is to enable remote rendering. What this means is allowing an external script to define the UI and then let the main application render it natively. The framework allows the external script to exchange data with the main application that results in UI being rendered and custom behavior to be executed. So the objectives we were trying to achieve are to provide a good user experience. Injected UI content is indistinguishable from Shopify's own native content on all platforms. We wanted to provide a good developer experience. External scripts can be built using familiar languages like JavaScript and TypeScript and frameworks like React or Vue and etc. And we also wanted to provide a security layer. The external script can only access and execute APIs provided by Shopify. At a high level, this is what we were trying to do. We have a JavaScript sandbox that loads an external script inside of it. Through an RPC proxy, the script can call the render UI inside the main application. When a user interacts with the UI, for example, clicking on a button, if the handler is defined inside the external script, the main application can call the handler through the RPC layer. Argo was built on top of a library called Remote UI. This library provides the following. A communication layer between the JavaScript sandbox and the main application. A remote component tree that the external script can operate on and the host can render. A proxy layer to allow the host to call functions defined in the JavaScript sandbox and vice versa. Now I'll talk to you about the end-to-end -end flow of how render, how rendered, uh, the con how the content is rendered. On web, first the host does some setup steps to set up the worker. Then we load the external script, and then the the external script constructs UI using our libraries. Then it calls to render. This results in the host receiving a message with the serialized component tree, which is finally rendered as UI. Digging into the host setup, we are building an extension component that can communicate with a web worker. We start by setting up the worker and the RPC layer. We create a worker with a worker.js file. I'll deep, uh, dive deeper into what this is later. And then we call create endpoint to create a communication channel between the host and the worker. This create endpoint function is provided by remote UI. And then we return the extension, the endpoints call method. 
This is a proxy that allows functions from inside the worker to be executed by the host asynchronously via message passing. Next, we set up an instance of the remote receiver. This receiver manages an internal component tree that can be operated on in response to messages. We also set up a controller, which specifies the implementation to use when rendering UI. In this example, we are allowing buttons to be rendered using the button component from the Polaris UI library. The host gets to decide which components will be used. This makes it possible to swap out components depending on what's needed. The last step is to render the remote renderer component from the remote UI library and pass it the receiver and controller. The remote renderer is responsible for converting the component tree it receives into UI using the implementation speci specified by our controller. Now let's look at what's inside the worker script. Inside the worker, we define a render function the host will be able to call with a script URL, extension point, and a message handler. The first step is to call import scripts with the external script URL to load it. Then we'll create a remote route and pass our message handler. This sets up the connection between the host receiver and the worker's remote route. We also create a map of registered extension callbacks. We, re we rely on the external script to populate the map. When render is called, we get the registered callback for the extension point and then call it with the remote route. Here, we can also pass in additional data or APIs so that the external script can get access to it. But this example only shows us passing in the remote route. Next, we set up the worker's RPC layer by creating an endpoint to the worker. This is the counterpart to the endpoint created on the host. We then call to expose the render function. Internally, the RPC layer automatically manages storing the function in memory and then responding to a message from the host to trigger the render function when necessary. This seamlessly allows the worker and host to exchange data and make proxy calls to each other. Another thing that's inside the worker file is to set up globals available for the external script. Here is where we expose the extend function un under the namespace Shopify. The external script will be able to call this function to register a callback to be saved in the map we saw earlier. And then we are also able to restrict globals available to the external script. We are removing the ability to call import scripts so that additional scripts cannot be loaded. Finally, once the render function is set up inside the worker, the host just needs to call render with the external script and the extension point. The extension point is set up to a string playground. This is just a representation of a point available on the host, which external scripts can execute custom behavior on. We are also passing through the receiver.receive method that will serve as the handler for messages coming in from the remote route. Let's jump into the external script inside the worker. Once it's loaded, custom behavior can be executed. Here is an example of an external JSX script rendering custom UI. First, the script imports a button component from our library. The script then creates an app component that renders a button with a title and a callback assigned to the onPress property. Writing the script is exactly the same as writing any other React app. Let's dive into the button component from the Argo React library. It is constructed by calling the create remote react component provided by remote UI. This, fu this function follows the same interface as a react functional component. One thing to note is that the on press is now converted to a function that returns a promise. This is because all functions passed through the RPC layer always returns a promise as they are executed asynchronously via message passing. And if you're using an editor with TypeScript enabled, you get access to static typing 
and code completion, just like any other React component. Once the script sets up the app com component, it needs to call to actually render the UI. The Argo library provides two functions, extend and render. Extends provide a way to set a callback for a particular extension point. In this example, we are setting the callback for the, the playground extension point, which is the same one enabled by the host. Then we set the callback to be calling render and return our app component we defined earlier. If we dig into the extend method provided by the library, this simply calls Shopify extend, the method that we've defined earlier in the worker script. The library takes care of the implementation details by providing the extend function. Similarly, the Argo library also provides the render method that takes care of the implementation details. At a high level, this function takes in a render callback and returns a function that can be triggered with a remote root. It then sets up a custom React reconciler. To keep things simple, I have omitted our custom configs that's passed into the reconciler, but you can think of this, of this reconciler as a similar reconciler to React DOM or React Native. However, it's hooked up to our remote root, and this allows the remote, remote root to manner manage the internal component tree and communicate with the host in order to actually do the UI rendering. So once the reconciler is set up, we call the external scripts render callback. And then we append the results to the remote root container. And finally, we call mount on the remote root. On the host side, we get a mount message and the children from the remote root as the payload. Digging into the render payload, we get an array of objects representing each node in the tree. Recall that we are setting the props as, uh, as follows in, in the external script. We have a button with a title and an on-press callback. This gets converted into a node that has a unique ID, the type that represents its implementation, and the props as specified. You can see that onPress is now converted to a proxy function. When the proxy is called, the RPC layer takes care of calling the right handler with the matching pro proxy ID from inside the worker. And then the say hi callback is triggered. We also receive children as an array of objects. In this case, we don't have any children, so the array is empty. Finally, the renderer on the whole side converts the payload into UI. Internally, the renderer takes care of converting each node in the component tree by recursively calling React create element with the implementation and the props for each child. Now that we've covered how UI is rendered, I'll walk you through how UI gets updated based on user inputs. Here we have an example of an external script rendering a text field with the value prop managed internally using state. When a user types into the text field, the onChange proxy is called, which triggers the setTextValue method to update the state inside the worker. The text field value prop is updated with the new text value. Internally, React Reconciler calls the remote root to handle updating the component tree. This, in turn, sends an updated message through the receiver on the host, which then triggers an update to its internal root. Finally, the renderer is called with the updated root that contains the updated props for the text field, resulting in a UI being rendered. Now that we've covered how Argo is built on web using React, I'll talk about how React can be swapped out. Looking back at the end-to-end -end flow for rendering UI, a few pieces can be replaced. Different client libraries can be used by the script to construct the UI. For example, the Argo React library can be replaced with Renula.js or Vue.js 
Similarly, we can swap out the renderer on the host side with another implementation. React DOM can be replaced with Swift or Kotlin or React Native. Swapping out the pieces is possible as long as the contract between the JavaScript sandbox and the host is maintained. The same render payload with the serialized component tree is sent, no matter which library the external script is using to construct the UI. Similarly, no matter how the UI is rendered on the host, when a user interaction on the UI results in calling a handler on the external script, the host triggers the handler via a proxy. Now, I'll show a quick pre-recorded demo of how all the pieces work together. Here, I have an external script rendering a form and a banner into Shopify on web and iOS. For this example, I've enabled live reload, which will allow us to see the updated UI as we change our code. Now I'll demonstrate how we can pull in and utilize additional APIs provided by Shopify. The library provides useful hooks in order to do that. We'll call the use extension API hook. And from, from the API, we'll pull out the toast object, which contains a method to call to show a toast message. Now, all we want to do is uh, I'll put the content of our form in a toast message as a JSON string. Once this refresh, we can test out our new callback. So I'm filling out the form, and now if I hit submit, I get a toast message with my form data. I can also do the same on iOS. Notice that iOS has rendered the picker as a native picker component. And when we submit, we get a toast message, just like on web. The same external script is used to render content in, on both iOS and web. And the content is exactly like you know, how native Shopify content appears. So that concludes the presentation. Argo was built with, ex with flexibility in mind and security in mind. I hope this talk allowed you to learn more about how it works. Thanks for watching.